Good afternoon, YouTubers. So today, I'm going to give you a walking tour of the town of Darlington in Beaver County. I'm going to explain to you the historical significance of this town. We have a little breeze here. The first stop is going to be here at the Burrsburg Academy. Darlington, Pennsylvania was originally called Burrsburg. And if you see these old railroad tracks here, Originally, this building in front of you, which I'm going to explain about in a moment, acted as a railway, railroad, uh, or railway station here. And this is going to come up a little bit later, very significantly, because it played a crucial role in something that was a major operation here in Beaver County. And as you can see, this is a quite peaceful little town, very historic. Originally, it was settled in 1804, so it goes back a long ways. The building that you're seeing here is the oldest in Beaver County. This was a school that studied or had classes in religion, philosophy, mathematics, and there was a quite significant student body here. Just look how old these railroad tracks are. Just take a look at that. Isn't that cool? So let me get to the front here. There's an historical plaque here that you can see for yourself. Read it as follows. Now I'm going to give you a list of a couple of people that were famous who received instruction here. One of them, of course, the first individual I want to talk about briefly is the abolitionist who was famous, probably the most famous abolitionist was John Brown. It is said that John Brown attended school here and made some numerous lectures here when he became a famous abolitionist. Darlington was a hub, if you will, for the Underground Railroad in Beaver County. And these railroad tracks that you see in front of this establishment probably housed runaway slaves that were going to meet people who were going to help them in their path to freedom. This ancient stone walkway here and these grounds that you're seeing here were probably familiar to slaves. Now, not, of course, not all the normal decorations that you see here, but I'm speaking of the grounds itself. Here's, you can see, here's another marker for the Greersburg Academy. And the first gentleman, too, that I also want to talk about is a man by the name of John Greary. John Greary was wounded ten times in his military career. He was a famous general in the Civil War, but before that he was a uh, soldier in the Mexican-American War where he was wounded at the Battle of Chapultepec. I don't know if you folks are familiar with that battle, but it was a famous battle of the Mexican-American War. When he finally got into the Civil War, he created the 147th and 28th Pennsylvania Regiments. And as a result of that, he became known for his uh, mighty military campaigns. And that is to say he had uh, been in the Battle of uh, Gettysburg, the Battle of Chancellorsville, the Battle of the Wilderness Campaign, and I think there was a couple of others that he was actually involved with. And after that, he became the 16th governor of Pennsylvania, running on the Republican ticket. And I'm showing you the whole building here. I'm going to do a 360. You can see that these are the original stones of the building, ladies and gentlemen. Certainly not the windows, but the stones themselves. It's quite old. This building was built, it is purportedly, uh, in 1802. By the looks of these old stones, that certainly seems to be the case. And the other gentleman that I'd like to make mention of who attended class here was a man by the name of William McGuffey. And for those of you who are familiar with McGuffey's books, McGuffey invented textbooks that were be used throughout the United States. And since its publication in 1836, they have sold well over into 200 million copies. They are still in use today in public schools and private homes schooling. 
Roy McGuffey attended this building also for school instruction. So along with him, John Brown, and the others that I've mentioned. Sorry about that, it's a truck. This is quite an historic building. And last but not least, I cannot confirm this, but it's been suggested to me by several local historians, and it's more so of a myth, that uh, Frederick Douglass also gave talks here in Darlington to abolitionist societies. There was an abolitionist society here in Darlington, and there's also one up above the hill there. This is the downtown section here. Up above that hill, there was some Chippewa. It's called the Chippewa Abol Abolitionist Society. As far as it can be determined, there were two abolitionist societies that were quite active in Beaver County. And here's the Darlington Borough historical marker that you can read. So as you can see, uh, Darlington certainly has its place in the history of Beaver County. It houses the oldest known building that was built in Beaver County in 1802, probably one of the oldest buildings in the United States. It was a major hub for the Underground Railroad. It has Civil War significance. There's a Civil War marker over there by Weaver's Catering. When I'm done showing you the rest of this small little town, we'll go over there and check out the markers. I want to show you the old relics of the museum that is store that is still here and is operated by the Beaver County or the Little Beaver Historical Society. And as you can see, we're actually going to walk on the tracks. These tracks are no longer in use, but they're old and ancient and I like them. Darlington is home to some of the earliest forms of agriculture in Beaver County. Beaver County started out as a farm region with the towns like Darlington, and Enon Valley, and Hookstown before it became the mighty glass factory which Henry Fry made famous in Rochester and before of course the infamous steel mills. And here's an old house here, it's kind of creepy. It sits right here in the corner of this quiet little town. It's almost like a Ray Bradbury town. Just look at it. That's where we walk from. That's the part of it, and they're restoring it. I actually have pictures on my Pinterest site where there's not even a fresh coat of white paint on that building. We'll take you up to the intersection here. To the industrial museum. Now inside this industrial museum there are some amazing things. I can't begin to tell you the fascination that it holds for any person who's interested in museums and what is contained in them. But I gotta tell you, honestly, that what is inside this museum is quite fascinating. It's an industrial museum. It has old machinery for many of the businesses that were in Beaver County and contributed to the industrial revolution of this country. And there's the little Beaver Museum right there. Here's the one-stop shopper that's still there. And this building here that I'm approaching is the Industrial Museum, the McCarls Industrial Museum. I cannot tell you what it holds inside. I don't want to tell you because I want you to come and visit it. <laughs> if you've never been here, you're in for a treat. You would not believe what's inside that building. Trust me, it is worth your time and visit. And as we walk here, here's the office part of the Beaver County Industrial Museum. Here's an old church. And 
here is a marker that we're coming up to. I thought I would do more justice by just actually walking around and doing this for you, just to give you the heart of Darlington. I'm not showing you everything in Darlington. I'm just showing you the historical sites of Darlington because I just feel it's important and I feel I could get better shots by just doing it on foot rather than driving. Let's take a look here at the Free Presbyterian Church of Darlington. It's quite old. So getting back to the issue of the Underground Railroad, as I said, Darlington was a major headquarter for the Underground Railroad, primarily because of the Protestants that lived in this town in the early days before the Civil War were staunch abolitionists. And as a result of that, they formed societies to have their voice heard. Pennsylvania outlawed slavery, I think, in 1843. So it was, took a long time for their voice to actually get underway. And Pennsylvania, next to the state of New York, produced more regiments in the Civil War than any other state in the Union. And 33,000 Pennsylvanians died in the Civil War. So now we'll come up onto the intersection here. Again, this is the historic part of Darlington, PA. For those of you who don't live in Beaver County anymore, and you never got to visit this little town, you've missed out. So I hope I've provided you with some resources that will intrigue your curiosity, and you can research further. I always admired this nice little house right here. This town seems to be untouched by time. A few businesses have come and gone, but geographically, it seems to remain the same. We'll go up to that Civil War monument. And I'd like to show you that and the writing that's on that and the history that it contains. Forgive the noise. And as many of you know, well, maybe, maybe many of you don't, but up ways towards straight yonder there on Bradford Road, there's a place called the Button House, the Buttonwood House. The Buttonwood House was a major hub for the Underground Railroad. It harbored uh, runaway slaves, housed them, gave them clothes and food, and made sure that they had a safe travel as much as they could. It was said that they uh, rescued and brought to freedom at least 60 slaves from the South. That's just one story. There are many stories in Beaver County. There are places in New Brighton, Beaver Falls, Freedom, Geneva College. A lot of places in Beaver County contributed to the Underground Railroad movement. Let's come up on this Civil War monument here. It's quite impressive. This is in front of the former's Weaver Catering, which sadly has gone out of business. They served wonderful food. Good folks.
Venice. As I said earlier, Beaver County, specifically Darlington today, was home to many Civil War veterans. Major developments that led up to the Civil War took place here. The Underground Railroad, of course, being one of the probably the most important that took place in Darlington by the early settlers of Beaver County, whose names and contributions are little unknown. So I hope you have enjoyed this video. Give me a like, give me a subscribe. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Check out my Pinterest page, my Facebook page, my Twitter page. I have many uh, wonderful photos of old Beaver County and modern Beaver County. So that will conclude our video. Have a great and safe weekend.